This podcast is rated M for mature. Content is generally suited for 17 and up. May contain intense violence, blood and gore, sexual content, and or strong language. So if you're offended by words like fuck, please continue listening. Come hug me, I know you want to. You're listening to the Second Opinion Podcast. This podcast has been brought to you by Second Opinion Productions. Gaming is our passion, podcasting is our profession. Check us out at secondopinionpod.com. What is going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Second Opinion Podcast. It's Celeb, and I am joined by my partners in crime, John C. Riley. What's up, John? Look at me. I am Justin Biaba. Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> We're also joined by uh, Phoenix Fire or Jen. What's up, Jen? Uh, not too much. And John, I think you had a little introduction audio for her as well. Oh yeah, that's right. Here, here, Jen. This is your introduction. This guy's nipples are not on the same level. <laughs> I know it's a guy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and wow. we're also joined Damn. by special guest Matt from the Game of Throners. What's up, Matt? How you doing? Not much. How you guys doing? Good. Good and I just here. realized I'm calling you Matt. I hope you don't hate that. I know there's a lot of Matthews out there that are like, fuck the name Matt. <laughs> Matt, Matthew, Maddie, I've heard them all. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, it's awesome to have you. And I think we are going to be joined by Toaster McGee pretty soon. He said he had to reboot his computer. So he'll be uh, coming up on the show soon. And it's great to have him back. He actually just moved down to Florida. So um, it is awesome to have him back on the show. And you can also check out his other show, The 16-Bit Assassins, right on secondopinionpod.com. So let's go ahead and move down into what you've been drinking. What have you been gaming? John C. Riley, let's start out with you. What have you been drinking? What have you been gaming? I've been drinking a beautiful vintage 2014. Uh, I think it's called Poland Spring. It's delicious. It's awesome. a choice vintage. <laughs> what have you been gaming, man? I have been gaming Super Meat Boy, nice. and I've been also, what else have I been doing? A lot of Counter-Strike, getting back into Counter-Strike, and of course, uh, like I said, uh, probably the last podcast, I just got Ghosts, so I've been playing that. You know, i working on code, working on, like, you know, Code Academy and learning some Python, and then mm -hmm. do that for a couple hours, and then jump on to Call of Duty Ghosts and just play that for, like, maybe an hour, maybe, you know, sporadically. I'm not really that... Uh, it, it's an okay game, but it's like, you know, I'm not going to obsess over it and stuff. I'm not an age shot, so I don't need to prove myself <laughs> to anybody. So, Exactly. Exactly. All right. So we're also joined uh, by Jen, which I already said that. I don't know why I'm saying it again. <laughs> Jen, what have you been drinking? What have you been gaming? You blew it! I did. I did. What have you been drinking? What have you been gaming, Jen? I have not really been drinking much of anything. I have what I have right now with me. I have been it made berry punch because yeah, oh. which is really good to mix with peach schnapps, but I don't have peach schnapps right now. I understand. <laughs> what I've been drinking, uh, gaming. I've been playing Witcher One, Witcher Two, uh, gearing up for Witcher Three, uh, World of Warcraft, of course, because I got only have like two weeks left of game time, so I got to keep playing that until I can find someone else to buy me time again. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not paying for it myself. That's just that's just crazy talk. <laughs> no, it's in yeah. here. But yeah, that's pretty much. Oh, and uh, I had an alpha build of a game called Griffin Knight Epic, which is actually on Kickstarter right now. It's the 2D scrolling shooter thing. It's adorable. Awesome. Really, just the cutest little thing ever. So yeah, I've been playing that too. It's been nice. my, my week. Awesome. Well, uh, Matt, what have you been drinking? What have you been gaming? What have I been drinking? Um, seeing how I'm a northern Maine boy to begin with, um, I get the Poland Spring reference completely. <laughs> <laughs> 
And on that topic, all I've been drinking is a whole lot of water because I'm trying to uh, cut back on some of the caffeine, and I know the gamers are going to cringe at that. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's Sorry, a lot of them guys. right now that are like, what the hell did he just say? We're done. <laughs> yeah, we are done. But, yes, uh, a lot of water, not, not so much on the caffeine side of things. Um, no, don't have time to drink hard, hard liquor or anything because, you know, working third shift, you know, you go into a store and you buy booze at seven in the morning. You kind of get some weird looks. Yeah. Just, you know, that that it gives that projection of you might have a problem. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no booze. No booze. That's understandable. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> yes. uh, as far as what I've been gaming, I have been... Uh, my my gaming is mostly uh, PC based right now. I kind of got rid of all my consoles with the console generation transition and stuff. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm part of the PC master race. If you want to go there, no, um, so uh, I've been playing a lot of uh, Alien Rage Unlimited. Uh, there's a lot of indie games: Interstellar Marines, Dino Horde. Uh, was it Orion Dino Horde, which is a terrible game, but if you get the right group of people with it, it's a great game. <laughs> um, just those kind of games. I really okay. haven't been playing many of the uh, tr- big AAA games that have come out re- recently. So. Okay. All right, and we are joined by the man himself, Toaster McGee. What's up, bro? It's so good to have you back on the show. I, I was waiting for, like, the myth, the legend. Oh, I didn't think. Hang on, let me get in the, the myth. And the legend, Toaster hey, McGee. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hi. So nice hey. to have you back. Yeah, I know. It's uh, it's good to be back here. Yeah, dude. How's Florida? Hot. Hot and, as shit. It's swampy. Have you been to any beaches yet? No. I thought you were going to make a like a beeline for a nudist colony. No, I'm just going to wait until like, January <laughs> when the beaches are empty and the water's still 80. Gotcha. <laughs> Like, oh my god it's 50 out yeah but it's like the, that ocean there is 90 what is your f- <laughs> going so, to walk so i'm sure that you really hadn't hadn't had too much of a chance but i'm gonna ask you anyways what have you been drinking what have you been gaming um i actually smuggled some uh ballast point sculpin ipa out of massachusetts <laughs> awesome i'm like down to my last three yeah. it might be tears after this evening i don't know yet <laughs> so I've been drinking those, and uh, actually, I've, as I've been getting acclimated to, to being back in Florida, I've been I've been playing some Hitman uh, Absolution. Um, awesome. No offense, but I take stealth so perfectionately that yeah, all the all scars are just done now. You <laughs> had some, what you got some looking up to do? Huh? Yeah. What's that? I'm sorry. He's just this saying. guy needs a kick in the balls. Yes. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um. <laughs> and um, also, I downloaded the uh, Xbox Gold uh, free game of the month. Okay. Which was Motocross Madness. Oh, nice. That is actually a lot of fun. Awesome. The little dirt back game. Dirt, little now, dirt is it dirt biking game. with your avatar? Yeah, it's the dirt bike game with your avatar. Oh, okay. You actually get some really cool fucking tricks, too. Like, it's, you know, like... SSX worthy tricks with a dirt bike. Don't even talk to me about SSX, you cheating bastard. <laughs> oh no! Ah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, look, I got my professional microphone and my soundboard now, so I'm going to make this as clear as possible, Caleb. <laughs> there actually, are no cheat codes. I'm coupling the microphone for dramatic effect. Okay. There are it. no cheat codes. <laughs> I'm telling you. Shut up. Just shut, shut your mouth. <laughs> I don't care what they say. There was cheat codes, man. No. Making billions of points. No. Making me look like a fool. <laughs> I'm just good at that game. I'm sorry. <laughs> you and Skelly are jackasses, dude. Y'all were beating the shit out of us. Skelly guys. prodigy, actually. Yeah. yeah. Like, I just want to go on record right now and say a certain somebody introduced me to a group of people at a midnight launch party and claimed that Prodigy would not play me in SSX. Um, that claim has not been substantiated. I do know I've beat his score. <laughs> mm-hmm. But that's it. That's really all I know. Attention seeking horse. 
<laughs> <laughs> and actually, tomorrow I'm looking forward to um, some Diablo Trace. Ah, me too, my friend. On the Xbox Uno. On the PlayStation 4. But um, <laughs> I do have an admission to make while we're all here on the air. Okay. In front of Matt. From no. Game oh, 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 hey, buddy, what's going on? What's <laughs> going on, bud? <laughs> um, I may have pre ordered a PlayStation 4. Ooh. Yes, yes. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Did you, did he not know this previously? What did you, wait a second, did you pre order Destiny PS4? Um, maybe. I don't know. Oh, maybe. Oh, yes, yes. 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 Is it the yes. so you got the white Destiny bundle? I did. Like I played um, Dunny from the 16-bit show. Had he downloaded it on the PlayStation 4, and I watched the alpha, and I was stunned. And then I got into the beta on the Xbox One. I'm like, wow, this is a lot of fun. This is none of my friends are going to be playing it on an Xbox One. Yeah, true. And yeah, so. PlayStation or fans prepare or prepare for the Toaster Headshot song. Hey, bro, wait, you wait, and me are going to be playing a lot. I was going to say, wait a second, wasn't this the whole argument for the Xbox 360 <laughs> that all my friends were playing on it? Yeah, it was, <laughs> and now it's the the flip around. Caleb or Celeb totally flips out and uh, and and is actually excited about PlayStation products again. The other thing is too, I am a massive Batman fan, so it's kind of like you want to see what Arkham Knight looks like on the PlayStation Four. Yeah, I'm totally. Uh, um, that's another topic. I'll probably talk about that for days. So. I don't know, just but see, like Diablo Three seems perfect for my Xbox One. Like, yeah, yeah but you got to think though too is that you're not going to be able to play with the Shadow of Colossus armor. Against clickers. Wow. I'm, <laughs> yeah. say he does it. I'm gonna try real know? hard because this is an audible show, so viewers can't see my face. <laughs> the listeners can't see my face. See uh, how I'm in media there? Um, <laughs> I'm gonna try to make this as non sarcastic as possible. Okay. Let me hear it. They don't care. You don't care about Shadow of the Colossus? Dude, come on now. Like, if I cared about every single suit of armor <laughs> that every single game developer released as a pre-order on a console, cross-referencing, like, I mean, I, I, I had my moment. When you could get the N7 armor in Dead Space, I was like, yeah! And then We'd be very, very, like, very poor gamers. So <laughs> we would be. <laughs> this is stupid. I, I uh... pre-order money to get a costume. I'm just telling you, Jeremy. Exactly. Just telling you. It's going to be so much better on the PlayStation 4, dude. Oh, my God. Fanboys. In the Xbox One version, I could probably run around as a Master Chief-inspired suit of plate mail tattooed with Marcus Phoenix's armor on top of it with Coltrane written on the back. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, anyways, let's move on. Let's move on. We're talking about this a lot. I'm sorry. Um, no, but I don't, I don't think there's really a, a, uh, a difference in graphics or anything like that. I think it's both good. It's going to be awesome on both consoles. I'm totally excited for it. So I, um, what'd you say? That rant did not deserve crickets. No, I guess not. (laughs) Oh, <laughs> no, uh, so I have been drinking some Newcastle Black Cabbie Ale. Um, awesome beer. Uh, I, I was drinking the uh, uh, Harvest Pack from Samuel Adams. I think it's actually one of the first packs they've came out with, uh, seasonal packs they've came out with in, a, in a, the last year. That's actually a pretty good pack that doesn't have some fucking Fruity Pebble beer in it. And Toaster, you know which one I'm talking about. What? Uh, the Fruity Pebble beer that uh, <laughs> Samuel Adams released. It was a Fruity Pebble. Oh, was it Porch Rocker? Oh, God. Yeah. What? Yeah. I think they're, they're, they have a beer that they released beer called Austin, Porch Rocker. It's called Go everything. Pebbles. A light beer. We're going to take lemonade and put Bud Light in it. Yeah. They got it Dell's was... Lemonade, too. <laughs> I heard Matt talk about it one time, and he, was, he said that. He was like, you know, it tastes like, it tastes like a Fruity Pebble beer. It's really weird. I don't know if I like it. And I was like, I, ah. I don't like lighting Google shandy. Oh. <laughs> there's no reason that beer should go down that easily. 
<laughs> like I admit, I can like I can put a beer down without a problem. But when it goes down, like you're drinking a refreshing carbonated Hawaiian punch, yeah, there's Fuck an issue. <laughs> I agree. I totally agree. So, um, like I said, I've been drinking Newcastle Cabby. Uh, gaming wise, um, I haven't been gaming that much here recently. I've been real busy at work. Uh, I am going to finish the uh, review. Uh, for uh, Mega Coin Squad. Um, that should be finished by tomorrow afternoon and posted up. Make sure to check it out at secondopinionpod.com. Uh, Dara has been taking up a lot of time on the PC, so I haven't really had much time to play Rack. She's been playing uh, Hearthstone again. Um, and I have still been playing The Last of Us Remastered. Um, now, tomorrow, uh, two games come out. Um two games come out uh, that are um, really dear to my heart and I can't wait um, I can't wait to play them. Diablo 3 Reaper, a Soul Edition or Ultimate Evil Edition and also Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare for the PlayStation 4. Uh, Final release on PlayStation consoles. If you have not played this game yet and uh, you have the chance to Please, please try this game. It's uh, definitely, I did a review of it. Um, it's definitely one of the uh, most awesome non-conventional shooters that you will play. It's very chaotic and uh, goofy, and it's a really fun game. It's nothing like the normal Plants vs. Zombies. There's the theme of Plants vs. Zombies, but it's a really fun uh cool kind of family-esque shooter. So uh, I really love the game. Me and Dara love it. So um, I'm totally excited about getting that tomorrow. Uh, and you can also check us out on twitch.tv uh, forward slash second opinion pod. Tomorrow, me and Skelly will be doing some live streaming of Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls for the PlayStation 4. So, hey, real- hey oh, uh, yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Toaster. I can't get in on that because I have an Xbox One. You can if you just trade in your Xbox One. No. <laughs> um, but uh, Let's real- tell you to play a Crusader and punch things hard. In- <laughs> um, Xbox One. Yeah. Real quick, we're going to talk to Matt real quick uh, about the Game of Throners. Matt, tell us a little bit about the Game of Throners. Um, the game of Thoners. Thoners, I'm sorry. <laughs> I keep saying Thoners because that's what I look at on Twitter for yeah, some reason. That, that's what it, well, it's a play on the game of yes, Thrones. Yes. So we're, we're, the mix up is always understandable. We get that. Oh, not that Game of Thrones. Oh, okay. No. Game of Thoners. Got it. Yes, Game of Thoners. Um, no wieners. What we do. <laughs> no, no wieners. Uh, what we do is we do long session uh, gaming marathon events on Twitch for various charities. So like the last two that we've done, we have done one for, uh, they both went through Child's Play. Um, they, one was a 25 hour event, the next one was a 24 hour event. In between there, we've raised about 25 to $2,600 in those two events for, the first one was for the Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto, and the last event that we did was for the um, Children's Hospital of Michigan in Detroit. I hope I awarded that. <laughs> um, summertime, everybody, we have 10 guys, so it's kind of hard to get everybody to coalesce, as you guys know, trying to get everybody to do something together during the summer when everybody wants to be doing things with family and outside. So. Oh, yeah. But if you're a true uh, gamer, you don't mind. You'll just be inside <laughs> all the time. So, Right? Well, with the, exce- with the exception of most of the people that are in the group are also have families. So oh, okay. <laughs> makes it a little Totally hard understandable. To kids. Um, Fab, our, one of our co-founders, is going through uh, school and doing some of his chemo stuff. That's a lot of the reason we started the Game of Honors. Is, um, Fab has a lot of connection with the, the first event that we did um, for the Sick Kids Hospital. He has a lot of personal connections there. So, And it's just kind of snowballed into doing this more often, you know, trying to make the world better by doing a hobby that we love, for, you know, especially for kids. Yeah. Um, one of the things where I'm working on right now, we're kind of behind the scenes, is I'm trying to get St. Jude's uh, Children's Research Hospitals into the Child's Play Network. That that that's my 
goal. When That's I'm awesome. Working. Yeah. Um, as far as the next event that we're working on, um, we are have one set for September 11th of all days. Um, but it is a hour long stream and we have some special guests, shall we say. Um, okay. We have, uh, I don't know how many people know CG Thornton. Yep. Uh, for, yep. Mm -hmm. she, she will be um, appearing on our stream with us nice, for nice. That, that hour. So uh, we are looking to do a, that stream for an hour with uh, St. Jude's. Um, uh, was it the live play? I can't remember the actual charity thing that they do um, okay. for live streaming gaming um, on September 11th at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because, well, I still live on the East Coast. Sorry. <laughs> Whereabouts are you located? You said something about Maine. Are you still up in Maine? Uh, no, originally I, I'm a Southern Mainer or, you know, um, no offense to the people from away, shall we say. If you've gone to Maine and you are from Mass or New Hampshire or Connecticut or Rhode Island, you get the, you get the mentality of all the people from away. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, I I originally am from Maine. I moved down to uh, Pennsylvania area. Recently. Okay. Um, cool. So, cool. But I am still in the East Coast. So. <laughs> right on. Right on. Now, uh, when you guys are doing these um, these live streams, when you did the last two twenty four and twenty five hour ones, were you uh, were is was everybody up or did they take shifts while doing the uh, the live stream event? Um, the first event, everyone was up. They, this is the problem we run into. This uh, gets into what we're looking to do in the future. Um, but the, fir the first event, everyone was up for. I believe it ended up total was like 44 hours because you do all the prep work prior, doing all the yeah. prep work after. And then you have the actual event. So it's like you, you have a lot of stuff that goes into it. Uh, so the core group of guys were up for 44 hours. On wow. The, first event. Damn. The, the second event, um, one of our guys ended up, <laughs> having to pass it off to one of his kids because he he just couldn't do it, you know. He didn't he, stay up. No, he he could he couldn't do it. Uh, but you know, it <laughs> it was what it was, and we ended up still having a great event that entire time. So um, awesome. The other three guys ended up staying up the entire event and you know muscling through it. But that was another. I think it was like forty hours, give or take, that everyone was up. And it, you know, it, they're just long events. <laughs> they really are. That's pretty yeah, awesome. That's almost like two whole days that you guys were up doing this stuff and all for charity. That's wicked awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, like I said, the, the biggest thing is, you know, there there are a lot of things that happen in hospitals or I should say don't happen for hospitals. You know, entertainment is one of them. And if we can, you know, brighten up a, a, a sick patient's day, a sick kid's day, by, you know, giving them, helping them raise money for like a PS3, PS4, you know, yeah. Xbox One, whatever, you know, console of choice, take your pick. And if that gives them some enjoyment while they're going through what they have to, that, you know, that's awesome for us. Yeah. Awesome, man. That's, that's really cool because I think that when some people, uh, I hate to step over anybody, I'm sorry. Um, the only reason why I, I spoke up and stuff is because normally when people um, hear about people raising ch money for charity, for like children's hospitals, uh, sometimes people like myself initially thought that it's for treatment and stuff, but, but it, like how you explain it, it's for the entertainment purposes to be able to like, if a kid's going through chemo and, you know, it's able to get his mind off of that, except for like, you know, of course he probably has a Nintendo 3DS, but if he doesn't, he's a console gamer. Why not? This, this definitely helps out. And, totally. and that's the that's the thing for us is that like that's the core of what we're trying to do. We, we want to, you know, brighten up these kids and these patients' lives just by providing you know uh, operate kind of like Operation Supply Drop with the the guys that are you know deployed. You know, kind of give them something to to bide their time and having some enjoyment. You know, be it through the net or whatever. You know, through online play, etc. There's just a lot of ways gamers can help, and this is just kind of our way of helping. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome, seriously. And uh, whenever we get the podcast all posted up and stuff, we'll also have uh, the links um, below to uh, the website for you guys and also for y'all's live stream, uh, Twitter account, and so on and so forth, so some people can come over and help support you guys uh, in what you're doing. So uh, thank you very much, man, for explaining a little bit more what the Game of Thoners 
Yes, not the Game of Throners. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, real quick, we're going to go ahead and talk about video games coming soon. Obviously, I've already talked about two of them. Diablo 3 Ultimate Evil Edition is coming to the Xbox One, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4 on the 19th, which is tomorrow. Also, Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare is coming to the PlayStation 4. Um, there's a few other games. One that hopefully we'll be doing um, a uh, review, um, even if we don't do it the way we're going to do. We're still going to get the review up. Uh, in a timely fashion, Metro uh, Metro Redux, uh, the full uh, remastered version of Metro 2033 and uh, Metro Last Light. Um, so we will have a review of that up pretty soon. Madden NFL 15 is coming out on the 26th as well. Um, and a few other games later on down the line, obviously Destiny, uh, <laughs> The Sims 4 is coming out as well, NHL 15, and we can go on and on. But uh, I know there's going to be a lot of people that will be going out to get Diablo 3 Ultimate Evil Edition tomorrow, and I'm going to be definitely one of them. <laughs> Glad that I got Tuesday and Wednesday off, so I will be playing those games throughout, the, uh, throughout that time. Uh, now we're going to move down into... Uh, you know, some information about Spreaker. Please check out our Spreaker page at Spreaker.com forward slash This Is Second Opinion Pro. Uh, we have the Second Opinion Podcast. And coming very soon, me and Jen will be doing our end rant cast. And it's about 40 minutes of me and Jen bitching and griping about stuff. Are you excited about this, Jen? Are you ready to bitch and gripe about stuff? But of course. <laughs> I want to bitch and gripe about stuff. That sounded so evil the way she said that. She's like, but of course I am. I want to bitch and gripe. You can come on. We can bitch and gripe together. Toaster's toaster soapbox. Or what? what is it called? What is, what is it? <laughs> toaster's rant? Crumbs from the toaster? Crumbs from the toaster. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Shut up! <laughs> Crumbs from the toaster. Um. It's like the pieces of pumpernickel that don't get cooked all the way. Yes. <laughs> and the show has reached a new low. And people get so mad whenever they see him. Yeah, they're like, ah, oh, it's like, that's the best part. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, make sure to check us out on Spreaker.com forward slash This Is Second Opinion Pro. Also, check us out at Twitch.tv forward slash Second Opinion Pod uh, for some live streaming that we'll be doing very soon. Jason got his Elgato. I'm getting my Elgato this Wednesday. Um, El so, Elgato. Mr. Lopato. Yes. <laughs> so, we'll be doing a lot more uh, live streaming of. Uh, retro gaming and whatever. You know, I was going to get the new Elgato HD60, but uh, it does broadcast at 1080p, 60 frames per second for Xbox uh, One and PlayStation 4. Um, but you don't, you can't um, live stream any retro consoles, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360. So uh, I decided against the 60 frames per second and decided to get something that I can actually live stream stuff like Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes, Resident Evil 4 on the GameCube, mm -hmm. uh, some different stuff like that. So hopefully I'll be able to do that a little bit later on this week. Mm -hmm. uh, but until then, let's go ahead and tune into the Music Minute. Today's Music Minute is Legend of Zelda Dubstep. And uh, John, you ready to play this bad boy? Yes. All right, we'll be back in about three minutes, guys.
Huzzah! Huzzah! Ah! There was oh. even Wub Wub in the song. Ah! Why are we? Why are we doing this? Ah, 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 ah. Something seriously fucked up with you. That's why. <laughs> hey, ah. What the? Wait a second. Hang on. Everyone, everyone, silence for a second so we can listen to the amazing "What the Fuck" moment of Jen. What the fuck? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that man. All <laughs> right. So. Uh, we have some talking points tonight. Second opinion talking points. Why paid exclusives? <laughs> I said, <laughs> I can't fucking spell, dude. Fuck. <laughs> okay, why it. paid exclusives are not a big deal. Because I'm just going to buy it later when it comes out. Of exactly. Day. So there was a bunch of controversy uh, at Gamescom. Um, the Xbox press briefing popped out, and they were like, you know, this game coming up is an exclusive for the Xbox One. Did they it will it? only be coming to the Xbox One system. The glasses followed by the pocket protector. Yep. So, <laughs> plays a trailer, and it's Tomb Raider. Uh, the rise of the Tomb Raider, and the fucking internets went ablaze. Everyone started freaking out. Holy fuck! Tomb Raider's exclusive! Xbox fanboys were totally uh, flipping out about it. They were like, yes, yes! And everyone else was just totally pissed off. So pissed off. Um, so <laughs> they were extremely pissed off. And uh, I, can, I can understand why they were pissed off. Um, because I, I'm a big Tomb Raider fan. And uh, like... Uh, I was just saying here recently, I just sold my Xbox. So, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I was pissed. I was like, you got to be <laughs> shitting me, dude. Fuck. I just fucking sold my Xbox, and now this shit's exclusive. Fuck I'm sorry, bullshit. what was that recorded, Caleb? What? Did I say something? No, Did I say something on the recorded Caleb version? I thought that wasn't. No, that was the other one. No, the I one. don't know. It's okay. Everyone has the angry F-bomb. Hey, do you have the angry F bomb, John? Fuck! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much how I was. I was like, oh my god, you gotta be kidding me, dude. Good so. Day, how was it, John? <laughs> Fuck! I got bullshit on that! Yeah. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> so, uh, I, w I, was, I was livid. I was really upset. Uh, and then I was just like, okay, well, there's no way it's. There's no way it's a serious exclusive it's got to just be a timed exclusive um, there's no way they're using the word exclusive yeah and they're totally <laughs> using it like they were using it like this shit Heart is never <laughs> yeah they were using that shit like it will never be on anything else they're not using the word that means it's that's it yeah they're no, just they're, using exclusive yeah they're no! <laughs> so most of the times whenever people in the gaming industry hear exclusive, they're like, holy shit, that's only coming out for <laughs> for this console. So I was just – I was upset at first, and I was just like, no, nah, I'm going to chill about it. It's not that big of a deal. Um, so then after that <laughs> – Definition of the word exclusive. What, what got what, – even what heard in front of the word exclusive does I'm... not make the word exclusive <laughs> mean exclusive. anything else – but exclusive. <laughs> uh, so with the internet ablaze, all these fans put out a petition to make it uh, coming to the make it available to the PlayStation 4 system as well. And then finally, a day after Gamescom, it got uh, announced. Microsoft said we never said it wasn't it wasn't going to come to that <laughs> you just said it was exclusive you know what <laughs> yeah. i'm not we, surprised we, that um xbox we, people I, xbox people didn't have a petition for batman to come to xbox one yeah because that's a playstation I, exclusive i so. hate to say this because everybody's gonna that's not a, that is not an, never mind no say what now they're, they're not having batman uh arkham knight as a playstation exclusive yeah hmm? yes no. What do you mean, yes? Why do you say yes? Yes. No. No. Yes! 
I think originally, the, whenever they were saying that there's going to be stuff that's coming to the I, PlayStation I think Four, John's just looking to insert Daniel Bryan into this conversation. I, think so. I can understand that. No! See, it's, it's, I did watch SummerSlam last night, so. You mean with Brock Lesnar becoming the champ? Oh, sorry. Holy oh, crap. snap. It was ridiculous, man. It was so boring. You know what? It was probably it's a Cena match. Yeah. When isn't it boring? Yeah, I know, right? It, it was boring. It was like to the point of, exactly, there were crickets. There were chants saying how boring the match was. <gasps> I just, I'm the only reason why I'm even watching WWE is because I, I'm, I'm waiting for it to go back the way it used to be. Okay. Stone Cold Steve Austin and all this crazy That's shit happening. Podcast. What did you say? Anyway, back to gaming. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually I don't. <laughs> in public. No, but let's let's talk about Tomb Raider. I know I'm getting off topic. Um, okay, so it's a it, you know it's not an exclusive, um, but this is one thing I kind of want to talk about. Exclusive. Yeah, whatever. Uh, this is one thing I, I did want to talk about. Is do you do you guys think that fans? overly freak out do you think that if anything i guess the best way a better way of saying it do you think the fans now have a little bit too much power behind their their voice uh matt i'll start with you sir oh that's a double-edged sword it really is um because here's the problem if you, if you go back a few years ago um we've gotten into a lot of this ubisoft and it's always online great drm scheme that oh hey look single player assassin's creed i can't play um (laughs) you know so we've kind of swung not too i don't think we've swung too far the opposite way of where it used to be because if you listen to a lot of the marketing rhetoric of you know sony and microsoft and you know even the publishers and stuff now it's oh it's about gamer choice it's about giving the most you know it's all just corporate speak um it's really about the bottom dollar at the end of the day to them. They, no offense, they don't care about us as far as they, they just want you, at the end of the day, they just want your money, which is fine because I happily give them my money if your product is good. As far as the at time, they like, politely ask for your money. Exactly. You know, they say please. <laughs> the, the biggest thing that I've seen that is different is that the games industry is stopped trying to chase like this mythological, like, it's like um, new computer users and that kind of stuff. It's like, you know, you, you hear like this gear of the Linux desktop kind of crap yeah. where it's like, Oh, the mythical new user. It's like, there, there's no casual gamer there. There's gamers. How, the extent you want to use, you know, play. Okay. You can debate that. Yeah. But as, as far as the end of the day, there, there is no casual gamer market per se. It, yeah. It's, it's all, gamers you know you're marketing to a core demographic yes but at the end of the day to me it's just customers need to stop flipping out so much yeah but on the on the same note the the companies need to be held responsible for their marketing and the the wording that they are using i i i totally agree with you I totally agree with you. And I'll jump in on that point right there is, you know, there's a lot of aspects that you have seen in the gaming industry over the past couple of years, like GameStop and, uh, you know, Amazon and Best Buy and all these different people that are doing, let's just say they're doing these marketing ploys with some of the gaming companies of saying like, you know, uh, if you get it exclusively at GameStop, you can get uh, this skin and this and this and this, but it's only exclusive at GameStop. You could throw that in there in the same aspect of saying, you know, it's shut up. (laughs) Um, No, but really when you think about it, like it's, it's complete bullshit marketing because most of the times whenever companies like Game, GameStop uh, and Amazon say, well, you can – if you pre-order it, it you, you'll get this and you can't get it anywhere else. And then two months after the game comes out, you are able to get it just on the store. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the reason why there's been this big push of – you know, there's a lot of people trying to say stop pre-ordering stuff. You know, Just wait until it comes out, which I, I somewhat – I'm the type of guy that wants to pay a game off ahead of time. Um, but I do agree with Matt in the same sense of gamers do need to calm down in the freak out standard because there's a lot of gamers and there's just a lot of fanboys out there. Uh, you can stretch it to even the movie industry as well, that if they see something they don't like, 
they automatically flip out. They take it to Reddit. They take it to forums, and they're like, we need to fucking stop this because it's not the way I like it. I mean, perfect example, Mass Effect 3 ending. Perfect example. Holy <laughs> shit. Why do you, like, that's like bringing up, like, when you were ducked into uh, a chair and God. they ripped the duct off your beard. Dude, uh, you know, it's me and, years, you and me, Toaster, we were, we were both fans of the Mass Effect series, but I really, particularly, I didn't have a problem with the ending that they had. I just, oh, I just God. pretend it was just, like, the bad part of a video game. <laughs> well, I, did, I, I didn't really particularly had a problem with it, and then bam, out of nowhere, it's like... It's a bug. <laughs> it total I mean it, everyone freaked out about it it's like it's the worst ending ever and now there's a downloadable ending and it's just I, I think it's ridiculous oh, 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 oh. it's not a downloadable ending it's an ending that it's like a super dance party <laughs> that, that you ended up having to pay for <laughs> yeah that you had to pay for. pay for and then it's like at the end of the dance party it's like let's all sit down and take a picture yeah because we're all gonna die yeah because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You're all dead. So yeah. anyway, because oh, it's just I just think it's ridiculous. I think, you know, we just need to calm down sometimes before we start talking about stuff. Uh, me and me and Toaster talked about this multiple times whenever it first got announced that Assassin's Creed Unity is not going to have any female characters in the game. And gamers everywhere flipped out. Oh, Ubisoft is sexist because they're not having female assassins in the game. Well, you know, how can they be sexist when they came out with a full fucking game about a female assassin? Oh, yeah. It wasn't really nearly, it wasn't, it wasn't just the, like, the non-female assassin thing, I guess, was kind of a big deal. Yeah. But what made it worse was the way Ubisoft's people handled it when they were True. like, oh, for women, because they're too hard to animate. <laughs> Oh, it, that you have one of the animators coming I out two days later, and it's like, oh, that'll take two days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, to be fair, it's like asking Todd McFarlane to draw a woman with normal sized breasts, but <laughs> which, yeah, you know, I mean, but like they say, like, oh, it's too hard. Yeah. Wait. Um. And it wouldn't whenever they originally asked that, so. weren't they? That weren't the was, PR people told like? I mean, they could barely even answer the question. They were like, uh, what? Do do we talk about this? Can we talk, can we say this right now? What are we supposed to say? Well, it's too, it's hard. too hard. It's too hard to do it. They're and French. Then, They're I'm sure French. they walked off, and somebody was like, "What the fuck did you say that for?" He's like, "I don't know. I was put on the spot." So it was kind of like Microsoft out there in initial Xbox One reveal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we have no answers. <laughs> oh but man! Like it. Wait, what? Mm-hmm. <gasps> what is this? What? <laughs> I hate that fucking thing. GameStop what? now has full Diablo 3 prop replica uh, Swords of Justice. What? Yes. For $59. What? Sorry. I might have to get that. Anyway, so, um, Jen, do you have anything to say about this, me lady? Well, people are always just going to bitch and complain. There really isn't. No matter what happens, people are going to find something to gang up on and decide that that's what they're going to want to complain about. That's just the way things are. The main character of that video game wore blue shoes. Exactly. Like, and they'll go on petition.org and create something so that they get changed to red shoes or a lighter shade of blue. I want to create a petition to stop people from creating petitions. I love, I love the misery, not the misery. I love the power behind people forcing other companies to do things. I think it's beautiful. That's, wait, that, that's like the one thing I wanted to say while we were talking about the PlayStation. In, in, I, there is some jackass sitting there at a computer going, yup, all because I went online and put my email address down. I was a cause of change. And now to Raider is coming to PlayStation 4. No, oh, those sorry. are small. Those I'm are small potatoes. The voice of reason. I'm going to be the voice in the back of your head when you found out Santa was a. No. no. <laughs> yeah, you Toaster, thought that you were horrible. You know that the PlayStation fanboys or Xbox had f- nothing to do with the <laughs> two Raider yeah, game. They they may have, but or... you haven't you haven't put uh, went head to head. God, uh, I think that Nintendo all knows all too well that they don't want to mess with fans because yeah. they've always backed down. Uh, case in point with the Smash Brothers thing, uh, with Evo 2013, they were gonna showcase it 
and bring it back after like you know a long hiatus and uh, Nintendo put a stop on it and said no you're not allowed to stream it and they got such an like an overwhelming response from fans saying how dare you and all that other stuff they let them yeah. do it and, all right guys let, yeah. let's Nintendo yes Nintendo has to listen to their fans because <laughs> no, Nintendo good point <laughs> exactly good point <laughs> <laughs> that's a perfect way of saying okay. it. nintendo's a pushover i'm sorry who the hell names a console are we you yeah can we just can we go back over what nintendo has to offer all right so an italian okay. plumber mario kart 8 of child that just always gets in trouble um but guys are coming out with super smash brothers 4 pokemon and a game that lets all of them fight each other. Yes. That's pretty much it, right? I, I think I got all... Well, 14 years straight with the Pokemon. There's uh, yeah. little Kirby's Big Planet, which is the new one coming out. Metroid, uh, whenever they decide to release that in the next 17 oh, years. Oh, yes. <laughs> Troy, let's try not to screw it up as bad as we did before. Good luck. Before. And before. Monster uh, Hunter. Uh, okay. Hyrule, Hyrule Rule Warriors. I mean, let's, let's face it. What were we all thinking when we saw the reveal for Splatoon? Come on. You're spraying paint all over. <laughs> we're waiting for you to say it. Like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like, come on, really? Speaking okay. speaking of games that people don't want to talk about that are maybe it releasing think... someday. Well, the point I'm trying to make, John, real quick <laughs> is... Okay. I'm sorry. Xbox, like, developers understand the idea of time exclusive because... You're going to get a shit ton of sales right out of the gate. Yep. And then when your sales are starting to flounder and the studio is going or the distributor is going, so why did we spend $10 million making that game? You're like, ah, PlayStation 4. Bang. Yeah. yeah. It, it really boils down to a business decision. I mean, obviously, Microsoft probably threw a truckload of money in front of them, too. There's probably no doubt about that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, that's something that everybody was saying, too, is, you know, there's a there was obviously there was a lot of people freaking out about it. But obviously, Microsoft came to them and said, we will give you a shit ton of money if you at least make it a timed exclusive. You know, so why wouldn't they do it when you think about it? It goes back to like what Matt said. Game studios or these publishing houses are all about making money. They just ask for it politely. They don't care about (laughs) you. They ask for it very politely. (laughs) They've gotten better about asking for it. Uh, yeah. I won't give them credit. They stopped hitting us. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, I'll do this for myself. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I deserve that. No, it's okay. Um, so, John. Yeah. We're going to talk about the next topic. Yes, sir. Um, so, uh, whenever we're talking about games coming out and stuff, the next topic is when will we ever see Half-Life 3 and Left 4 Dead 3? Never. <laughs> there was a certain interview uh, recently, right, John? Yeah, uh, according to... Uh, I was actually looking for uh, quotes from writers or producers inside of Valve, Steam, whatever. And uh, there's a, a person on YouTube called Heroes Allen, and he actually was able to do an interview with a couple people. But the one thing that stood out was for uh, Chet... Uh, Chet Falizak and this guy interviewed him and it's so funny how in these two clips he was trying to get information out of him and the guy was like literally trying to be explained like ah you'll you'll see let me uh, play clip one but you have one like steam department Correct. and then one portal yeah so there's different groups oh, yeah but um and one for half-life three so our yeah, <laughs> nice try um our, our office is actually all our desks are on wheels so we can just all move around and work on different things. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Who knows where they're wheeling around to. This, of course, means that Half-Life uh, 3 will have co-op as well. Man, again you're trying. <laughs> One of these days I'm going to trip up. This is going to be on, bad. Come on, admit it. I'm going to gra- no I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to grab the camera, throw it on the ground, crush it. <laughs> There's only a Half-Life 3. That's the next step, right? We'll see. Okay. I guess you're already written it. I mean, you, you have the script. We'll see. Okay. So, who knows? Does he die in the end? Who knows? <laughs> I'm kidding. They thank make you, us take drops. It removes all that information. <laughs> thank you. It's very nice yeah, meeting nice you guys. Thank you. <laughs> so that was. <laughs> that guy had some balls to keep yeah. asking the question. Hey, yeah. that, that takes some guts there. Yeah. Gotta love, gotta love the foreign people. Now, actually, that was both clips together. Uh, 
you know, improper editing sometimes happens, but you know, I try to split them up, but I think that worked out just well because that explained, I just tried, try to put up the two things because these were out of like a 10 minute interview with a bunch of people and some of the people were kind of getting angry at him and that expected response. But this guy, uh, Chet actually played it off pretty funny. So, you know, kudos to him and stuff because who knows if they actually have it written or whatnot. And I think that the whole entire joke that's going around the internet or, or has been going on that I've seen is, um, Gabe Newell saying, uh, ha- half life three and, uh, maybe left for dead three is worth its weight in gold. Oh yeah. Weight <laughs> is yeah, or, or worth the, the weight. Past. Um, they, they have talked about it in the past of saying, uh, actually a, I can't remember exactly who it was that had stated it, but they came out and did say, uh, I've seen Half-Life 3 and uh, Left 4 Dead 3, and they it looks stupendous. And you'll definitely be – said something to the fact of you'll definitely be happy when it releases or so. Um, so, Matt, do you think that uh, – do you think that Half-Life 3 and Left 4 Dead 3 will be worth their weight, or do you even care? <laughs> Uh, well, obviously I'm a PC gamer, so um, I'll, I'll, of course I'm gonna care. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the biggest thing with Valve, um, uh, if you're just looking at their history, they they will be worth their weight as you know Half Life Two was, as the weight for Half Life, the original Half Life was. The thing is, people have to realize is if you look at how the history of Valve, they've always put out a Half Life game basically when they have a new engine. So we'll see Half-Life 3 and Left 4 Dead 3 by the time we see the next Source engine. It's really that simple to me. Yeah. True. Is the Steam Box already out? I'm sorry, Kevin. Go ahead. No, no you go ahead, man. Uh, is the Steam Box already out? Commercially available? Uh, uh, commercially available uh, depends on... Are you talking the Steam OS Steam Boxes or are you talking about this just... Uh, thing called Talking about the Steam, Steam OS, the one that's actually going to be out. Because I, I guess both, because... They could spring. I know that the the whole entire the like you know rumor was that oh yeah if you buy this and it's you get Half Life uh, three exclusive and stuff. It's like yeah that's probably not gonna happen. They're just filling <laughs> our heads with nonsense. I, I was gonna say uh, I think Gabe Newell already came out and said that he wouldn't do exclusivity on like a game like Half Life three anyway like that because the Valve's trying to take that open a market approach more as opposed to the the storefront approach as far as hardware and whatnot. So um, uh, as far as the Steam OS, Steam OS is available for download as far as uh, the actual Steam boxes. I know there's companies that have some out, but I don't know if they're shipping them with Steam OS or if they're just shipping with Windows with Steam pre-installed in big picture. uh, Other than that, I don't know. Hmm. Um, yeah, and, and what about you, Toaster? Do you think? Um, I mean, I, I'm sure that you care about Left for Left for Dead. I don't know if you give a shit about Half Life. No, both of them. I'm a big fan of Half Life. Yeah. Okay. Right? For Dead, Left for Dead was a lot of fun, and Half Life was like really one of the first uh, real first person shooters that I sat down and enjoyed because there was more to it than just plowing through shit, and blowing things away. Yeah. Um, I just. I don't know. I think I've reached a, a point in my game playing where I'd rather a game come out when it's ready than be rushed. Totally. Or be like, oh, yeah, it's going to come out November of 2014. Yeah. Did we say 14? We meant 16. Yeah. I think you and me actually talked about this before of saying, you know, uh, I would much rather a company come out and say, hey, uh, you know, the game isn't quite ready yet. In, in our eyes, we would like to wait and it come out at a later date and, and be probably one of the best games I've played in years as of Evolve. We've uh, got so rabid about these fucking release dates. Yeah. Like, I think people, I think more companies need to kind of take a look at Blizzard and be like, when's it coming out when it's ready? Exactly, yeah. Like, yeah, don't, don't deny. Yeah. Don't deny like, its existence. When, when, when we're finished. Yeah. You know what I mean? When have you ever seen a Blizzard game delayed? Never. The worst you get is, hey, we couldn't sign on. Which, I'm just, I'm still baffled as to why companies haven't figured this out yet. Whatever your beta was, multiply it by a thousand, and then you have enough servers. Sure. Um, but, Indeed. like, I think more studios need to just be like, look, 
this is when it's coming out. Like first quarter, third, you know, second. Like if you want to give a time, give a quarter, but don't be like it's coming out November 11th or whatever. You know, release the game when it's done because I guarantee you, your fan base is going to be a shit ton more appreciative. Yeah, like I when agree with you. Arkham Knight got delayed. You were upset. Well, <laughs> I was. Naruto Revolution has been delayed again. It was supposed to come out August 1st and now September 1st. Now it's September 16th. So it's a game that I've, or, I, 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 I pre-ordered. It within got delayed. I wasn't freaked out. I was just kind of like, yeah, ah. It's like it happens. It's like uh, the, the Order 1886 got delayed too. I mean, yeah. it, you know. It's... Watchdog got a, a delayed. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> For what? Oh, no, one hey, hey, no one knows. No <laughs> one knows. Nobody has any clue why Watch Dogs was ever delayed. <laughs> For more polish. Yeah. What polish? More memes inside the signs. More polish. We wanted to make sure that the game was polished enough that it looked worse than the E3 demo. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Um, so, uh, Jen, did you have anything you wanted to add on the Half-Life 3 subject? You guys pretty much covered all of it. I, I got nothing. Okay. Well, we'll start out with you first. Well, actually, let's let's hear this audio first real quick about PlayStation Share and how it could be a game changer. SharePlay will allow any PlayStation Plus member to do the following. First, well, Caleb, you, can you get that accent? any friend anywhere <laughs> to take turns playing any of your games with you. Effectively passing the controller to your friend virtually, no matter where they are. Second, you can invite another PlayStation Plus member to play together with you in the same session, either cooperatively or competitively. In essence, sitting on the couch together, but again, no matter where your friend is. What's special about SharePlay is that your friends do not need to own or download the game. Now that is big. Uh, SharePlay is, like he just said, it will be a virtual passing of the controller. So if Toaster has, let's just say Toaster um, is on PlayStation Network and I have Destiny and he doesn't. And I cannot get past this boss. Toaster basically has 60 minutes if I click on SharePlay and I invite him to SharePlay. He has 60 minutes to jump to my game and beat that boss. Now, it does... Do the, what you can't. Do what? And do what I can, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, now, it does have the 60-minute intervals in, in, the, in the play sessions, but you can, if it gets past that point, you can always just invite them again. Um, but it's so awesome that the, it gives you such an amazing feature of, you know, if somebody didn't have a certain game... And you just, if you just wanted them to come and play the first level for an hour, you can actually pass the controller to them and give them, it gives them like a full hour to play the game and be like, okay, I, it's like an hour long demo. So I think this is, I think this could be a really big thing for PlayStation marketing wise. Jen, what do you think about this? First off, can we just not use the words game changer? Because I'm really. Game Oh, hearing. Changer. Game changer. <laughs> changer. Yes. Game reconfiguration <laughs> device. Uh, so annoying, but I mean, I don't have, I don't own any Sony products. Uh, um, well, I had one, but someone broke my PlayStation 3. And uh, yeah. I have a PlayStation 2 that counts. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, it sounds cool. It sounds like it would be fun, you know, if I had one to share along with other friends who <laughs> have one. I understand. <laughs> um, I think it could be. I think it could really add a lot um, to PlayStation. I mean, to, to say that if somebody doesn't have the money to buy certain games, you can just invite them to that, that share session Let's just say you, Jen, if you had a PlayStation 4, but you didn't have Destiny, I could just start a new game and say, hey, you know, you got an hour to play it. And I can let you play that first level for an hour. Uh, I think it, I think it would be good. You wouldn't even have to download the game. I, and I'm guessing it kind of depends. That maybe it depends on your download speed, your internet connection. Yeah, that's uh, a factor go into it. But yeah. I was going to say, I think uh, a lot of the assumption is that it's using... Uh, 
because Sony bought the Gaikai service uh, yeah. a while ago, and I yeah. think a lot of people are thinking it uses a lot of the same stuff the uh, PlayStation Now yeah. uses as well. Now, you see, with the bad thing with PlayStation Now and that type of service is that if you don't have the right connection speed, it will, like, you can't do it at all. It, it's why on live didn't work. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, now, I, you know, I recently, I upgraded to new internet and we have 50 meg connection um uh, which is it was just pretty good and it like it i played twisted metal the other day uh, on my playstation 4 and uh it there was never a pause never a glitch never nothing and it was really awesome i mean it was really cool to be able to have the instantaneous access to any of those games on that store, but it's also the fact of the price at that time. So I don't know how they'll stretch that out. But the service, if you have good internet connection, I think it could work pretty good. Um, and I think that this could be a game changer. <laughs> no, I think I think this could be uh, something big. What do you think, Matt? I mean, do you think this is a, a pretty good aspect, uh, maybe even a marketing point for someone to buy a PlayStation for? I think it gives Sony a great reason to have people stay PlayStation Plus members. <laughs> yeah, true. true. Um, the the biggest thing I can see with this is, I'm I'm not gonna say it's a game changer because uh, from what I'm reading and seeing, it kind of reminds me of uh, what Microsoft was saying with the original Xbox One announcement about shared libraries and all this yeah. other stuff. Um, so. But the passing of the controller kind of stuff, and if it, if it really truly is like unlimited invites and that kind of stuff for any game at hour intervals, I think that's really cool. Yeah. And I really do think it will help get consumers over the hump of um, not wanting to have good games go as, um, I don't know if anyone does software development or SaaS software as a service. Uh, this kind of where the gaming industry kind of wants to go but it kind of can't because yeah. consumers have this, I bought it, I own it mentality. Exactly. Oh, where, whereas a lot of the companies, when we click the nice lovely EULA or we read the back of the manual, if your game comes with one still, um, you know, we're agreeing to you that we're basically a leasey of the game in question. And that that's kind of where we're looking to get pushed. And whether or not this helps consumers get over that mentality, uh, we shall see. Honestly, for me, I prefer to actually own stuff. So, and that is kind of a oxymoron being a PC gamer. Valve hasn't screwed me yet, so I can't complain. <laughs> yeah. But it, it very well could be. But I, game changer, and yeah, it, it, it might change the mentality for yeah. consumers. I think it, it might sell the, uh, the 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 games as a service model that they want to go to better than I think they've been trying to with DLC and all the you know pre order purchase crap and everything yeah. else that they do. So in that regard, yes, I think I do. Uh, I, I kind of view it as kind of like EA access almost. It's kind of like, eh. I mean, it could work. It, yeah, it could work. <laughs> it could not work. So yeah. I mean. Yeah. It's the same way with PlayStation Now. It could work, could not work. And we'll see. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it really depends on the infrastructure that is in place. And honestly, in the U.S., not really so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, I agree with you on that. Uh, what about you, Toaster? What do you think? Um, I think it's a good idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you think it's a good idea? That's it? Well, I mean... I'd be annoyed if it was like there's no like other demo other than an hour long. Like you well, get... I mean, it's more or less like all you're supposed to be doing is is coming and helping your friend beat a certain level is what they're trying to push. I like that better than what Ubisoft's doing with Assassin's Creed Unity. Oh, what you talking about the uh, co-op? No, the microtransactions. Oh, I didn't know there were microtransactions. The hey, you can't get that pistol yet. Have some real money. Have this fake item. <laughs> oh, that sounds awesome! Actually, it's it's the Shadow of the Colossus armor. Shut yes. up! <laughs> sounds like Check Ubisoft. <laughs> um, what about you, John? What do I, you think? Well, I can't wait to go out and buy my new PS4, and then once I have this service and become a PS PSN subscription man, uh, I'm going to sell my uh, skills to the highest bidder. 
So I will uh, <laughs> pimp myself out on Craigslist and say, hey, if you got stuck on a uh, level for Destiny or any kind of <laughs> PS4, you pay me, you PayPal me this amount of money and I will beat this level for you in under 60 minutes. John, where are just... those crickets? <laughs> John, you can start a Google Hangouts channel for this. Yes. Yes. Like, have like the, the... this idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great idea. I'm going to sell myself to the highest bidder. Anybody who wants me to get them further in a game, well, you know, hey, yeah, you, know what, you know what, John? People would probably take that the wrong way. <laughs> no. A little bit SSX? Oh, uh, no, no, not at all. Oh, Dude, I'm telling you, it was complete oh, bullshit. You're going to make me start talking about it again. <sighs> suck at that game. Just admit it. Just suck it up. I do it. suck at that game, okay? I said it. Um, no, okay, let's move on to the next topic, because this, uh, this is pretty awesome. Um, so, <laughs> so, Gamescom, PlayStation kind of announced that there was a, a new game that will be, uh, you know, pushing uh, Horde to the, to the next level. Um, and there was a good amount of, of content getting pushed out saying that it was going to be uh what's the name of the game john silent uh, hill not 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 silent hill there's silent another Hills. one as well i can't even think uh, of the what are you talking right about now. the evil within no no uh i'll think about it later but they did show off a, a, some a, some gameplay uh i think it's um oh god what the hell i can't even think of it now um anyways they were pushing and they showed a couple of horror trailers and so on and so forth and kind of got closer to the end of their um got closer to the end of their uh presentation and showed this pt trailer and all it did was just show an over the top like uh, camera from behind the television and it showed some gamers playing this game and they freak out and scream and they're like ah! and then it ends and they're like oh you can go download pt now on the playstation network <gasps> so obviously i did it i was like okay i'm gonna go in there download this and figure out what the fuck it is so i started live streaming it and jen and jason jump in the game and jen am i wrong whenever i say the game was creepy as fuck anyway yeah. It definitely, it was creepy. It, it was, was just not right with that. Totally fucking creepy. First person, ultra, ultra realistic graphics. Um, and they, you have no fucking clue at this time what the fuck is going on. Ultra realistic graphics that the people we haven't mentioned yet have also said were dumbed down. So we're dumbed down, yeah. For the, for the PT, which means playable trailer. Um, so I'm playing through this and I mean, there's already creepy ass moments. Me walking around a fucking walking down a hallway, taking a right, walking down some steps into a door and then basically being thrown back to where I was before. Like it's just a, a loop level. So I'm freaking out. Don't know what the fuck to do. And I walk down about a third time and I go to cut around that corner and there's this creepy ass bitch standing. that's like seven foot tall standing with light shining behind her. You have no fucking clue who she is. I'm freaking out, dude. Like, I'm totally freaking out. Um, so kind of find out all this crazy shit happens. I don't end up even beating the demo because I get attacked by some creepy fucking ghost bitch. And I, I literally jumped out of my chair so far I fell on the floor. And uh, <laughs> I was yelling. Like, I jumped out of my chair, fell on the floor, and I actually had some a neighbor, like, knock on the door. He's like, you all right? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine, dude. <laughs> so um, come to find out, after gamers really got into it uh, and really tried to push through and play as much as they could, um, the, uh, they finally beat the game, and uh, it comes up to this little trailer thing at the end and it pops up and it has the amazing name Hideo Kojima and then another amazing name pops up Del Toro and it's a full fucking playable teaser for the new Silent Hill game called Silent Hills um, and uh, the actor from from The Walking Dead that plays Daryl is actually I think he's going to be the uh, lead yes. huh? what did you say? Norman Reedus. Norman Reedus. I always forget also his name. For the badass role in Boondock Saints. Yes, in Boondock Saints as well. Uh, he is going to be um, he's going to be the lead character in the game. 
And I'm totally, I, I'm totally excited about it um, because you know it did have that ultra like uh, Kojima Productions uh, Fox Engine look to it. Um, so I'm really excited, and I'm hoping that we will see uh, Silent Hill for the first time ever as a first person scary ass title. Um, Matt, have you seen much about this game? And are you excited about the new Silent Hills? Oh, how do I put this? Uh, I stopped caring about Silent Hill after two. <laughs> I, I, I had uh, suspicion that I don't care what's coming. Um, <laughs> Anytime you preface, well, how do I put this? Yeah. It's like, no, no. The, the the biggest thing was Silent Hill one. On, you know, on the PS one was great. Silent Hill yeah. two, I enjoyed. Then they just got, it's like they just kind of was like here's another one and another one it just kind of lost what it was after a while so i kind of really just stopped caring about you know it's kind of like resident evil it went like off in this like weird ass direction where it's just like it's not what i liked so why am i why do i care so if they if they can take take it back to that survival horror element which it seems like they're they're kind of going i think the game you're talking about was dying uh dying light um I think I'll have to look it up real quick while you guys are talking about it. But I think if they can take it back to like that evil within and you know that that creepy atmosphere that used to be in the, like the first couple games, they might have me sold. And if that is the case, I haven't really had a chance to catch up on all the Gamescom news yet. So if that's the case, and if I have the chance to play this, then I will definitely be interested in this from the sounds of it. The game I was talking about earlier was actually Until Dawn which is a uh, remake uh, title, uh, and it's going to be... It's basically like a... Uh, it's, not, it's a title that was supposed to come out on the PlayStation 3. It was supposed to come out on the PlayStation 3, wasn't it? That's what it was. I knew I heard the name before, but everybody kept saying, well, it's finally coming out. Originally announced for the PlayStation 3, uh, but completely rebuilt for the Japanese giant next-gen machine. Why did it say Japanese giant next-gen machine? Um, but... Uh, I think it's going to be a really fucking awesome title. Like, Kojima actually came out and said uh, originally him and Del Toro um, were pushing to make fans, and this is his actual statement, we were originally pushing to make fans pee their pants, but now our new direction is to make fans shit their pants while they're playing the game. So uh, I think they're really going to try and scare the shit out of people. I know there was a lot of weird stuff in the in the demo. Uh, Toaster? Are you excited about this? Um, maybe, possibly. <laughs> Just depends. Like I, I I'm gonna have to. I'm, it's not gonna be something that I run out and get day one. Yeah. I mean, you can I'm, just watch me play it day one. I'm intrigued by the fact that you know Guillermo del Toro is involved in it, and if I mean, if some of like the visions that he brought to like Pan's Labyrinth. And some of his earlier horror stuff are like coming into this with Hideo Kojima. It could be good. Yeah. But after um, they introduced a dodge mechanic to Silent Hill, I kind of lost my faith in survival horror. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, so I can get out of the way? Yeah. I don't <laughs> think you'll. I don't think you'll be able to do this. Uh, do it in in this. I know that. I know if they're keeping it this way, as they did with the demo, which I'm sure there will be a little bit more interactivity than what the playable trailer had, you can only do a very base amount of stuff. Like you can only uh, you can only interact with like doors, with certain things here and there, um, and I, they might actually go the way that um, uh, that. Outlast did. You know, in Outlast, you could only do certain actions. You could jump. You can uh, do a few things here and there, interact with the environment, but you couldn't like dodge. You couldn't hit. You could hide, but that's pretty much it. But uh, I agree with you on that, dude. I think that if they add some aspect like that, it probably would suck. You know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it would suck, but it would. Don't you think it would make it a little bit more realistic of having a little bit more access to making your character move and get out of the way? I just think it's lame. <laughs> yeah, like you I, should. You think that you should. Like, if you put me in a mansion and then give me bullets, yeah. and I have a gun, okay. Well, this just became easier to get through. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah, like Resident, like the original Resident Evil, that I would say was a survival horror, because it did get to the point in some of those confrontations where you're like, uh, shit. Um, well, I ran out of ammo. <laughs> I can kill everything in this room and probably get face destroyed by whatever's behind that door. Or, hey, I can stand on the staircase and zombies can't use stairs. Yeah. Wait, I guess Resident Evil is a bad example. Oh, Resident uh, Evil 4 was still really good. because I was going to say Resident Evil 4 was awesome. Oh, my God. Maybe it, Resident Evil me. 5 and 6 are It's the only bad. Nintendo game Dead that Space. actually scared me. Yeah. I would say Dead Space kind of got back to the survival horror aspect. Of yeah, it. but you can dodge in Dead Space. Right, but you also, like, they screwed, like, the survival horror aspect on the thing of, like, shooting in the head does not matter. True. Yeah, because there was a lot of there was a lot of aspects that I remember the first playthrough of Dead Space. Whenever you shoot somebody in the head and nothing comes of it at all, you're like, "What the fuck is body yeah, still?" You have it? that moment of awe. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. You know, like I mean, like that. You know, cramped space, limited resources. You know, like make the resources in Resident Evil even less. Yeah. You know, like the, the original Silent Hill, and Matt, I'm sure you'll agree with me. Any bullet you had, you were like, do I really shoot this dog or do I just run away? <laughs> or do I use some type of melee weapon? <laughs> yeah. It's like, like, and it's sit there. Like, you died the first, like, six times. And then you finally, like, held back in the mist going, all right, look. Um, I can't waste the bullet because there's that guy behind the dog. But there's the person, I mean, like, the first Silent Hill was terrifying. And, you know, the puzzles were so intense. I, I, I don't know. I think I think my interest in Silent Hills will largely depend on how Alien Isolation does. Yeah, true. Because And, you know, I, I talked to uh, Captain Redbeard, who is one of the anchors for GameStop TV. He actually got to sit down and play Aliens Isolation. Uh, and I talked to him about PT here recently, and he did like PT, but he said there's something about Aliens Isolation that it really brings a horror aspect to gaming like never before. So uh, he, I think he got to play it for quite some time. They actually came to the GameStop uh, corporate office, and he got to sit down and play it for a while. So he said it was really good, a really good game. And games like that, I think I agree with you. I think that we need games like that to kind of bring back those horror, horror titles because – there was just something about there was something about playing Resident Evil back in the day and even Silent Hill that just because it was so out of the out of the norm whenever you played these games and like in Resident Evil 1 walking up the stairs and opening the doors those small little subtle aspects made that game just that much scarier you know to me whenever i was playing Resident Evil and I opened a door and it's like I'm like, fucking shit, what's behind the door? <laughs> so um, I, I hope that they can bring something uh, really strong with this title. Uh, and I think they will. Um, if if uh, I know that the biggest thing that I think is going to be awesome about the game is with Hideo Kojima's storytelling aspect. Uh, I think that he could do a really good job of making the story just totally fucking crazy. Oh, I mean, there is Lords of Shadow, too. Yeah, there is. But I don't care about Lords of the Shadow 2. That shall not be mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but I, I think it I think it could hopefully do something good for the for the horror genre. Uh and maybe until dawn will do something as well, which until dawn is kinda like heavy rain, but it's a horror game, so Alright guys, so this is the time uh, that we do shout outs and uh, we're going to start doing our shout outs starting with Matt Matt first I want to say thanks for coming on the show sir uh, I know that it was a kind of weird show popping back and forth I know I got off topic a couple of times but <laughs> um, it's, not a, it's not a podcast if you don't get off topic though. true, true. <laughs> uh, give, give us your shout outs man um, to all the guys that are and gals that are part of the Game of Honors, uh, to uh, Star Slayer, CG Thornton, uh, I want to say thanks uh, for her, her being on the next event we're doing. Uh, Miss Jenna, who is one of our Twitter followers, is also going to be joining us for that particular event. Um, so just 
and everybody who donates and you know child's play and you know, st jude's and all, all the great organizations that are there to help gamers you know donate their money and time to making the world better that, that, that's kind of where i want to go so there you go awesome man awesome uh jen shout outs ma'am uh, shout outs to you guys. It was good being on the show again. Shout outs to Matt for being on the show. Get you on one of the other ones as well. Again. <laughs> I, I'm making my rounds. Sorry, <laughs> my work schedule is odd. No problem, man. <laughs> well, we're an odd bunch, so we'll yes. around that. Yeah. Um, shout outs to my other sites, Structure Gaming and Dunham Gaming, and to assassins because and? I always need to mention all the sites as well and I don't know thanks for letting me be on the show again I thank you for coming on at such an abrupt moment yeah see <laughs> hey Jen you want to come on the show Just uh sure to me off the show to begin with huh? hey I was trying something different and now we miss you too much mm-hmm. that's the reason why you and me are going to have our own show Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, John, Jen. do you still have that as an audio clip? What? <laughs> the sound effect? No, I heard going, mm-hmm. Uh, somewhere. Yeah, somewhere in there. Um, toaster. Yes. Shout out to my bro. Shout outs to Pumpernickel Bread. Yes, totally. I feel really bad for its little Pumpernickel children <laughs> at the bottom of the toaster. Shout outs to Matt for jumping on another, uh, crazy ass podcast um shout out to the game of honors and everything they do guys contribute and if you don't have a charity in your area and you want to start one start one yes go to a children's hospital go get involved and be like hey we want to play video games and show that video games and do good things there yeah you go. no doubt <laughs> like get your moral lesson for the evening uh shout outs to four oaks north carolina where i broke down on my way to florida and we freaked out. Why didn't you just um, stay there? Because that, that would have been a long ass commute to work. Yeah. Um, shout outs to my buddy Digital Disease for letting me stay at his place until I got a new place after Seattle. Shout outs to I Draw a Red Box for calling my phone today. Um, <laughs> shout outs to everybody else see at PAX Prime. Shout outs to everybody yeah. else see at PAX Prime. PAX okay. Prime. Uh, yeah. That's it. I gotta give a shout out to Guar as well. Their lead singer passed away a couple of months ago, and they finally his his suit that he wore uh, on his shows. He actually had a Viking funeral, so pretty cool there. Um, but uh, <laughs> real quick, let's get John, and then I'll I'll do my shout outs. John, shout outs. Shout outs to of course everybody. You know, you know who you are. Yeah, and of course Matt. Yeah. From uh, Game of Thoners. Thank you very much for coming on the podcast and uh, sharing our uh, our uh, craziness inside the <laughs> show. Thank you very much for getting us back on track when we uh, got sidetracked by uh, wrestling talk. Thanks. So, thanks. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it's thanks for Jen and Toaster for making it. And uh, no thanks to Skelly. No thanks? No thanks. No thanks okay. to Skelly. Oh yeah, no thanks. That's okay. He's sleeping. He won't. He can't hear. Yeah, he's sleeping right now, so it's okay. (laughs) Forgive him, I guess. Um, No, uh, big shout outs to Matt. Shout outs to the Game of Thoners. Make sure to check them out on um, Twitch as well uh, for their awesome live streams. That's twitch.tv forward slash the Game of Thoners. Um, Shout outs to Jen. For always doing an amazing job. Shout out to Toaster. Thanks for coming back on the show this week, man. It's awesome to have you back. And I hope you, I hope you have an amazing PAX Prime. I'm very excited. Jen, you're going as well. Are you excited, ma'am? Um, I will be excited when I get there. Right now, I'm still in that. Oh, I'm getting emails all the time, and now I need to try to schedule everything. So with a little, this is my overload freak out time. I need to schedule four sites all at once. Do you know how many email addresses I have to check? I know. <laughs> it's a lot. Funny. Send me something to 16 bit assassins email. Tell me. <laughs> yeah. Please. No, that's understandable. Just randomly found that one right now and responded to that, but. Hey, Jen. 
<laughs> I sent you an email. Thank you. Well, It'll be good next next week when we're actually there and I'm hounding everyone and cattling them. <laughs> <laughs> cattling. You go here, you go here. Yeah. Um, but uh, shout out to Skelly. Um, he, him and me will be doing some live streaming tomorrow on twitch.tv forward slash second opinion pod. Also, shout outs to my amazing wife, Dara. I love you so much. If it wasn't for you, I don't think I'd be able to do this because you keep me sane from all the freaking jobs I have nowadays. So um, just shout outs to everybody. Make sure to check out uh, secondopinionpod.com. Also check out the Second Opinion Podcast soon. We will have many guests ranging from DJ Wheat, have Captain Redbeard from GameStop, also going to have Mark Barlett from Able Gamers, and pretty soon we'll have the co-creator of Loot Crate on the podcast as well. So make sure to check us out at secondopinionpod.com, and also make sure to like and subscribe on our Spreaker page at spreaker.com forward slash this is Second Opinion Pro. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Peace out. Thanks for tuning in to the Second Opinion Podcast. This podcast has been brought to you by Second Opinion Productions. Gaming is our passion. Podcasting is our profession. Check us out at secondopinionpod.com and make sure to follow us at Second Opinion Pro. Game over.